welcome to To The Point. Um, nice to have your company again with us. Today we are going to be talking about the amazing, amazing process of photosynthesis and plants. And Richard, I asked you just before we started shooting that there's one word to describe what we would be without photosynthesis and it is... Without photosynthesis, <laughs> we would die. <laughs> it's as simple as that. One word, yes. we would die. <laughs> it really is as simple as that, isn't it? Mm. But that's going to be our topic today. We're going to be talking about the amazing topic of photosynthesis and plants. And of course, we can't talk about that without mentioning the word irreducible complexity, can we? No. We'll, we'll see at the, at the programme, uh, in the fun fact, that photosynthesis is a very, very complicated. In fact, it's so complicated that uh, I, mean, I did actually do botany, but uh, they, even people who do botany professionally don't really understand uh, photosynthesis because light and dark photosynthesis is a very, very complex reaction. And basically what uh, leaves actually do is they fix energy. Phot light comes from the sun in form of photons, which are subatomic particles moving in a waveform. Um, the dangerous rays, uh, gamma rays and X-rays, are filtered out by the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere. And the plants, they, they actually fix, um, the, uh, fix the energy of photons, and that's how they create oxygen and food. And uh, so when, when I said just a moment ago, without photosynthesis we would die, we would. Uh, with, because we, without oxygen, we would die. Without food, we would die. And of course, they do one other really important thing. They mop up carbon dioxide, which is a waste product. Uh, whenever we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So plants are absolutely essential, totally essential and totally supernatural. Laura, back to you. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to be reading from the Word of God, just to highlight the point even more. Um, to the point, again, we do tend to present creation and medicine all working together because there is one source of it, and that is God, the creator of heaven and earth, and also who created us. So as it says in Genesis 1, 11 to 13, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit that yields fruit, the tree that yields fruit according to his kind, whose seed is itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth bore fruit grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Hmm. So on the third day, we had this amazing creation of plants, yeah. seeds, herbs, <laughs> trees, mm. fruit and vegetables, all God's wonderful creation. Mm. And we're going to go to a video. Did you want to say something before we went to the video, no, Richard? Carry straight on. Okay, we'll go, we're going to go to a video, and this video is a fun fact on photosynthesis. <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Today I wanted to talk about photosynthesis. In all the plants, in all the algae in the sea, everywhere we look, we look at the beautiful countryside, we look at the trees, the flowers, and we think, isn't it beautiful? Well, it is beautiful because God is uh, quite capable of making something beautiful which actually is very functional. Actually, what you're looking at is a factory. All, all living plants are factories, and all the algae in the sea the purpose for them is to create oxygen and food for all living organisms. That includes humans, birds, mammals, fish, everything that has a breath of life in it uh, needs photosynthesis, needs plants. Plants are green because they have chlorophyll in all of their cells. And what happens in, chlorof in the chlorophyll is absolutely stunning, amazing and totally miraculous. Because what chlorophyll does is harness uh, light from the sun. Light comes to uh, planet Earth from the sun in the form of photons moving in a waveform. Um, and what the chlorophyll does is convert carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of ours, and water in the presence of sunlight into, um, into sugar in the form of starch and oxygen. 
What are the two things that all living organisms need? Answer, sugar and oxygen. So all the green plants that we see all do something absolutely vital for each and every one of us. They make for us sugar and oxygen and also they mop up something we exhale with every single breath, carbon dioxide which is acidic and if they didn't mop it up, if, if the plants and the algae in the sea didn't mop up carbon dioxide, the whole world would become far too acidic and we would all die. So plants are absolutely fantastic. But what I want to tell you is that photosynthesis is not just only amazing, there's a, a light and a dark form of photosynthesis, um, but they, they do it with 100% efficiency. They harness the light from the sun. Remember the sun is 93 million miles away. It's, it's actually a nuclear fusion factory. That's what the sun is. Every second, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium, except for four tons, which are converted into light, heat, and energy of different types. And that energy is mopped up, the photons moving in a waveform are mopped up um, in, this, uh, in, in this equation called photosynthesis to create carbon dioxide, uh, sorry, to, to mop up carbon dioxide and to create for us oxygen and glucose, the things we absolutely essentially need. Now, humans can't do this. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, some people on their roofs, they have those uh, photoelectric cells which convert sunlight into electricity. Very good idea, but do you know how efficient they are? They are 4% efficient. That's how efficient those photoelectric cells on people's roofs are. Just 4% efficient. God's plants, by comparison, are 100% efficient. The plants are, ve are very carefully made. They have little um, stoma, like little mouths that open and shut to let in the oxygen and let out the um, carbon dioxide, the waste, sorry, to let in the carbon dioxide and let out the oxygen. Um, they are just totally miraculous. And the other thing about them is they are really, really beautiful to look at. Everything we see about God is beautiful to behold. Whether it's the human form, which conforms to the divine nature, um, the, divine, the divine ratio, or whether, whether it's uh, the plants, uh, uh, which are so beautiful to look at, Whatever we look at, wherever, where, and wherever we look with our eyes, and whatever we hear with our ears, um, the, 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 the world that God has created is miraculous and beautiful. Thank for listening and God bless you. And welcome back to To The Point and thank you so much Richard for producing that wonderful fun fact on photosynthesis. Let's talk a little bit about it now, a little bit more. Yes, well, photosynthesis and plants. Well, let's just start by talking about plants themselves. Mm. Um, um, <clears throat> they're factories. Now, when you think of a factory, a human factory, what do you think of? A dirty, grubby place with smoke rising and soot everywhere? Or what you might nowadays think of a nu nuclear reactor uh, with nuclear fi fission going on. And every, every two or three years, they come along with a big lorry and take away all the nuclear waste and put in a yellow drum with concrete and dump the nuclear waste in the sea. Either way, you're looking at a nasty, grubby, messy business. Compare that with God's uh, factories. We look out at the, uh, if you happen to live in the, in the countryside or if you've got a lovely garden to look at, you're looking at God's factory and it's beautiful. It's actually beautiful. Green is the most restful colour for all of us. That's, God purposely designed plants to be green uh, because green is, is, has an effect on our, um, <clears throat> on our brains. It causes to release lots of happy hormones called serotonin uh, because green is a beautiful colour. Now, I'll tell you why plants are green. They're not really green at all. Chlorophyll is green, but plants are green because the, the, each leaf mops up light from the different ends of the, uh, of the spectrum um, and 
but doesn't mop up the centre of the spectrum, which is blue and yellow, so that plants actually look green. That's why the plants look green, because the plants are actually mopping up all the indigo and the violet and the, all the other different colours at the other ends of the photoelectric spectrum. Um, what colour the plant, the leaves really are, is brown, which is what we, you see in the, in the wintertime when the chlorophyll all dies. So the point I'm trying to make is that God's factories are beautiful. Let me ask Laura, what is your favourite flower? <gasps> It'll have to be a lily, I think. A lily? I love the lily. It's got a beautiful smell. Yeah. It can, can be a little bit untidy because when there's those little stamens drop off and they leave a yeah. little orange tinge everywhere. <laughs> but I do love the smell of it and the look of it. There we are, the, the lily, the, the smell mm. and the beauty of it. And you mentioned this, this, the pollen as well, which is the seeds. We're going to be talking about seeds a little later on in this same programme. But you see, um, our human factories, well, after a, two, after a few years, they, they go rusty and you have to make a new one. A nuclear fission, you, you have to take away the nuclear waste and put in new nuclear material and all the rest and all the rest. But God has, in, in each little flower, in each plant, um, there is a seed and the, and the wind will blow the seed or plants will eat the seeds. One way or another, seeds are scattered, just like the Word of God is scattered. And each, each seed has got DNA in it, deoxyribonucleic acid, but not our DNA, plant DNA. So that each seed has the capacity to make a brand new plant. Again, God has put his sign of perfection on, uh, on his own factories that they can actually reproduce themselves. Now, uh, talking about flowers, my favourite flower actually is, uh, my wife's favourite flower are roses. I like to buy flowers for my wife and she likes roses. Now, roses are, I think, really beautiful. Uh, but they are actually, th that particular design of a rose is, has God's divine ratio. And you say, what on earth are you talking about, Richard? Well, Noah's Ark has a ratio, 40 and 60, the actual words. The Ark of the Covenant has a divine ratio. And so does the uh, uh, table of showbread in the, um, in the covenant, in the, uh, sorry, in, in the temple. Um, there are divine ratios which we see in, in our human body, but we also see in the plant kingdom. And all plants display this golden ratio in the secular, <coughs> in the secular art world. They talk about a golden ratio. I prefer to talk about a divine ratio. And we'll talk about the divine ratio on another program. It's terribly interesting. Um, but the thing is, God has put his stamp on all plants and the solar system, and our bodies, and fish, and plants, and animals, and, and birds, they all have the God stamp, which is a particular design called God's Golden Ratio. So God's factories are beautiful. What do you think about that? I, I think you're absolutely right, and I would agree <laughs> with you, and I'm sure God will say, yep, yep. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's created us so uniquely, wonderfully, orderly, uh, and and his, his creation, he's spoken the word and it's been put in motion and it goes on and on and on. Yes. So in the autumn, the leaves die and the trees, the, the trees go into a state of hibernation, as it were. Yes. And so do the animals. Yes. And, and we tend to as well. <laughs> 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 for those who can afford to, they move off to Spain <clears throat> or Portugal for their holiday homes in October. And then mm -hmm. they come back to the UK in March <laughs> when it's slightly warmer <laughs> and there's a bit more sun around. The birds have got more sense. <laughs> Absolutely, Richard. The birds migrate, don't yes, they? they do. And I thank God for that because there's some birds that like to perch themselves outside my window in the morning and make a lot of noise, and not always holy noise. <laughs> so I'm glad they've gone away for now and I'm expecting them back in the, yes. in yeah. the, in the spring. But God has created these things and he's made them so orderly, hasn't he? He has. Yes. And it's absolutely wonderful. And I think when we go to our next verse, which is again confirms what God's plan for us is, which is always good. Yes. And it's perfect and it's pleasing. And so we read, um, we take the word of God, which is one of my favourite verses. I thought it might be. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely favourite. <laughs> and it's Genesis 1.29 and it goes, And God said, See, 
I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you. It shall be for food. Mm -hmm. And don't I just love that verse? Mm -hmm. And the reason I love it is because, of course, when we go, we go further down the, the word of God uh, in Genesis 9:24. And it talks about God adding meat, animal meat, to his original blueprint of vegetables and fruit. God has the original plant-based diet. You know, man didn't come up with it, God did with it. But it really highlights God's plan for us, which is to be mainly vegetarians, but with a little bit of uh, animal protein as well. Wonderful. And so we're going to go to our next fun fact, which talks about trees and plants and thank God for them. Hello, my name's Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the miracle of trees and plants and flowers. Now, you may have heard me on other occasions talking about the miracle of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis uh, happens in the chlorophyll of all green plants and it's totally necessary uh, for the um, production of oxygen and starch for humans and animals. But uh, the leaves are very carefully designed and they need a structure to hold them up. We call them trees. So I'm not going to talk about uh, photosynthesis, I'm going to talk about the structures which hold the leaves up. And they are also fantastically engineered by God. They didn't happen by chance, they are designed by God. Now, if you look at a tree in winter, what are you actually looking at? You're looking at a wooden structure which is mostly tubular. Round tree trunks and round branches. Um, and these are designed to hold a, a heavy, uh, heavy leaves, because if you've ever picked up a, a, a branch, they're quite heavy, um, in the best possible position for the, for the uh, leaves on each individual branch to get the maximum exposure to light from the light from the sun so the miracle of photosynthesis can take place. Now you know and I know that tubes are actually very strong. We use tubes uh, a great deal in our own construction. Tubes, uh, sometimes they're tubular and sometimes they're beams. Uh, but in, for example, the Eiffel Tower or the San Francisco Bridge or most man-made structures, skyscrapers, basically the underlying structure is some steel framework. Well, God uses a framework, but it's quite different because wood is quite different. It's a living substance. It's actually quite different from steel or china or glass. All of these things would be totally unsuitable for a tree. Now what does a tree have to do? Well first of all a tree has to get bigger. You, you plant an acorn you end up many years later with, a, with a, a, an oak tree. So first thing the, the plant has to do is get bigger. Now nothing we, we make can actually get bigger. Secondly a plant has uh, to be very strong and uh, even in the UK, we can frequently have winds up to 40 miles an hour, and very occasionally we have winds up to 90 miles an hour. And, the, and most trees can actually survive um, a wind blowing at that uh, speed. They will simply bend over and then come back to their original shape. Uh, sometimes uh, trees have to adapt to their environment. Um, and you often see trees growing around other trees or trees growing around buildings. Um, the trees, uh, tr uh, God has designed trees in a tro totally miraculous way by putting within them long tubes, they're called xylem and phloem, which are basically long cells uh, which are, are ideal for bending and, and having inherent elasticity, so when they, after they've bent, they come back to their original position. Now, nothing else would actually work. Steel wouldn't work, uh, nothing else would work. Actually, wood is, more, is stronger weight for weight than steel, but it's elastic, and it actually can rebound, unlike steel, to its original shape. 
if you've ever been ever seen a car accident, um, you'll know that a car can't re automatically revert to its original shape. Well, trees can. Something more about trees and the plant kingdom generally is that they are designed by God in a very beautiful way according to the golden ratio or the divine ratio. Now the Ark of the Covenant is in the divine ratio, uh, Noah's Ark is in the divine ratio for example, and God has created trees and plants and flowers with his own imprint on them, the divine ratio. And not in this program but in another program I'll be talking about the divine ratio in humans and the divine ratio in the plants and the trees and the flowers that you can see God's design in everything we see. Thank for listening and God bless you. Hello and welcome back to To The Point and thank you so much Richard for that amazing description of trees and plants and I, I saw all that, you know the stuff we all learned in biology and in medical school, <laughs> it was amazing, physiology and all that, it was really wonderful to have that recapped again. Thank you, you're such an amazing teacher and I'd like to encourage you and I'd like you viewers to encourage Richard as well to continue to give us these amazing fun facts because he does them so well, he's gifted and he's anointed to do them. So. Mm. May that long continue. Thank you. So, you're, going to, you're going to do some as well. <laughs> healthy facts. Healthy facts. Healthy facts. Healthy, healthy perspectives. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but hey, the Genesis 129, obviously, it's, it's something that's very dear to my heart and, um, and, and something that's dear to God's heart because I think if we all did a Genesis 129 diet, you and I would probably be out of jobs a long time ago, Richard, don't you think? <laughs> Because a lot, of, a lot of the work that we do is actually to do with nutrition and, and diet and exercise and, and how we, we look after what we eat, what goes into our mouths. Um, and that, that is so key to what God's saying here about the plants and, and seeds and the herbs and, and, and the trees and the fields. And so we're, we're thankful to God uh, for that. Um, what did you have for breakfast today, may I ask? Me? <laughs> <Yes>. Porridge. <laughs> you had porridge and where did porridge come from? photosynthesis, <laughs> trees and plants, it did it not. <laughs> and I actually, I, I, have, I didn't have to say, I didn't have breakfast today, but I brought along a, a little, little um, fruit, fruit and nut mix, which I was sort of chumming on the way. And, and sometimes we do have some nuts provided by your wife, don't we? We do. After our programs, we go over to Costa or wherever. Oops, not sure I'm supposed to mention that. <laughs> but we go over, don't we? And then we, um, we have some nuts provided by via your wife and have a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever we, we choose. But as we can see, a lot of the things we eat are actually plant-based and provided by God through the process of uh, photosynthesis. Um, and so we praise God for that. So don't forget to interact with us. We are, um, you can reach us at info at revelationtv.com and to encourage us, but also to share your views. And um, we'd be gr very grateful uh, to hear from you. So Richard, <laughs> would you like to take, an, an, would you like to expand a little bit more about photosynthesis before we have a couple of minutes left um, before we uh, mm. wrap up today? Well, I would like to say thank you to, the, to Jeff Lister and his family for kindly writing to Impact Revelation TV to encourage us. Um, we'd love to hear some more thoughts uh, from other families, but we're very grateful to the Lister family for very kindly writing to info at Revelation TV. But coming back to photosynthesis, it, it is just fantastic. The, the way God has created plants is and trees and flowers is amazing. I'm, my wife and I, when, when we go on holiday, we like to go to the Lake District and I'm always looking at the trees and the flowers. And actually we often stay in a log cabin and just outside there's a massive oak tree and the, the, the great big boughs that come off, uh, come, off, come off the oak tree at a funny angle. I actually look, <coughs> looked up about shearing uh, pressures or shearing forces to be more ac accurate. Um, it's the design to hold up a, a large uh, oak bough of a, a, a oak tree, which weigh, must weigh several tons, is just fantastic because they come off at a very odd angle, and the shearing forces, if you look up the physics of it, are just stunning. So God is amazing. I don't know how he's so clever, but he's a super scientist to create plants and flowers 
all with a beautiful design and with photosynthesis going on, which is totally supernatural and provides us with oxygen and food. The trees in the field clap their hands, don't they? They do. And they provide us, the flowers provide us with natural beauties. You were talking about your wife loves roses and yeah. you buy her often enough, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Val, make sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Um, and so we got roses and we got lilies, we got all the different flowers. We got the potted plants that we have in our homes yeah. that help to get, bring back oxygen into our environment. Yes. So for those who live in sort of built up buildings and flats and places where they don't have a garden, you can bring God's creation into your home through potted plants, yes. which is an amazing way. Some people even have little mini um, gardens on their, on their balconies, a little two, two by two balconies. <laughs> um, but in any way, we are thankful to God for his creation, for the plants and the seeds, for food, as well as for beauty, to behold his beauty, to enjoy, to encourage romance, the husbands taking their wives flowers. <laughs> But as you said, the green is a pleasant colour. It's a colour that when you walk in the woods, where you go um, and on holidays with your wife, you walk in the woods and the forest, you've got the green, which is very calming. You've also got the blue of the sky and the sea also, which has a lovely calming and peaceful effect. And something I actually say to my patients, Richard, when they've got high blood pressure and they come in to see me and their blood pressure is sky high, I would say, why don't you just imagine yourself taking a walk in the lake, in, in the park, or looking at going a scuba dive and looking at all the beautiful um, array of fish and sea, sea organisms and just think about that and actually they, they visualize that and actually helps to bring their blood pressure down so God has given us ways of enjoying of relaxing of de-stressing ourselves not just by eating healthily but actually participating in going on nature walks and, and walks in the parks and swimming and and so you continue to enjoy the beauty and creation of God through photosynthesis by eating healthily you've been watching to the point thank you Richard and we'll see you again in the next program to talk a little bit more about God's creation God bless <laughs>